I get asked quite a bit, what size laser should I get? 5 watt, 10 watt, 20 watt, what's best? Well that depends, and we're going to go over that coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and again, I get asked quite a bit, you know, what, what size laser should I get? Should I get a 5 watt, a 10 watt, 20 watt? 33 watt, whatever. Well, it depends on what you're going to be doing with it. If you're going to be doing uh, just engraving, a 5 watt is fine, that's the lowest cost. If you're going to be doing primarily engraving and a little bit of cutting, and when I say cutting, I mean like thin plywood and basswood and that type of thing, not slabs of steel, because these won't do that, then you'd want to go probably with a 10 watt. If you do quite a bit of cutting, you'll want to have a 20 watt. And what I'm going to use for example here is the longer Ray 5, I've got it sitting in front of me here, and it currently has a 20 watt head on it. So it's available in the 5 watt, the 10 watt, and the 20 watt. So what's the difference? Other than power is work area, with the 5 watt and 10 watt you've got 400 millimeter square. When you move to the 20 watt you're reduced to 380 millimeter square because the laser head is quite a bit larger. Uh, for example, this here is a 5 watt head for the longer, and the 10 watt head is physically pretty much the same size. So you could swap between the 5 and the 10 if you like, uh, fairly easily, it doesn't take much effort. If you're going to want to swap between, let's say, the 5 or 10 and the 20, it then becomes a lot more involved because the bracketry and the z-axis mount and everything is different and it'll take you quite a bit of time, you have to take the uh, carriage apart, so that, that's not a, a place there where you want to be swapping around. Uh, the other difference is if you would happen to purchase a 20 watt, it comes with limits on the X and Y axis, whereas the 5 and 10 watt does not, at least of the time I'm making this video. Uh, this was originally a 5 watt, I then went to a 10 watt, and then I, I have now upgraded this one here to a 20 watt because I am now using this one here primarily just for cutting. So, what's the difference in precision? Well, I've got a cheat sheet here. Got to have this. So if you have the 5 watt, right there, the focal spot is 0 .08 by 0 .08 millimeter. It makes a square. The, the diode makes a square or a rectangle depending on uh, what particular type you have. So 0 .08 by 0 .08. If you move to the 10 watt, that dot gets smaller and it gets more precise at 0.06 by 0.06. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it does make a difference. Then when you get to the 20 watt, you are at 0.08 by 0.1. It makes a little uh, tiny rectangle. So, how important is that precision? What are you doing? Are you engraving on jewelry or are you doing, uh, for example here, I just ran a batch of these slate coasters right here and it's something that we sell quite a bit of and I just made a set here so if you're let's say you're engraving these slate coasters and you're making the coaster holders which were also made here uh, out of three millimeter plywood 20 watt will cut this faster they will engrave this faster give an example and it is not linear between 5 10 and 20 so if you have a 20 watt laser and you move to the 10 watt, it is not exactly half. And if you're going from the 10 watt to the 5 watt, it's not, not exactly half. Nor is it exactly a quarter of what a 20 watt would be. It is not a, in linear, you need to run your own tests. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples here for these slight coasters. And I have run tests, caught it, quick today. I run tests on a piece of slate uh, with the different lasers just so I could write this down here. I do have it in my uh, library for each laser. And again, you know, this is about the longer laser. If you've got an X tool or an Atom Stack or a Sculpt Fun or a ComGrow or a Flying Bear or any other brand, St. Smart, there's lots of brands of them out there. You need to run your own tests, but this will give you kind of a guideline. So uh, with a 5 watt, Engraving on this slate to make, I use the letter R for just for something quick. 
you would need 400 millimeters per minute of 70% power. For the 10 watt, you need 1200 millimeters per minute, 100% power. And again, I'm doing this by the best appearance. That's why the powers are differing between these. If you're going with a 20 watt, then this becomes much faster. You have 3000 millimeters per minute, 80% power. So if you're running a lot of something, uh, for example, these slight coasters, a higher power laser will give you a much quicker turnaround on your project. However, they also cost more, so you got to kind of think about what your end use is going to be. And you're probably wondering what this is. This is the next uh, beginner laser project, which will be coming up pretty soon, on laser engraving a mirror. So I just finished this up here and got the lights in it, so I thought I'd just kind of set it up here. That's something that will be coming up, and I haven't quite decided which laser I'm going to use to demonstrate it on, but it'll be coming up. So. I hope that answers some of your questions. You know, which laser should I get? Which is the best one for me? You know, again, it depends on what your project is and what you're going to do. If you're uh, going to be making uh, big wood signs or something like that, you may want to go with a laser with a larger format or get an extension kit. You don't necessarily need to have a 20 watt head if you're engraving on wood or uh, putter coated aluminum. But if you do have that, it'll go a lot quicker. Okay, another thing you can do with a 20 watt head that you can't do with the 5 or 10 watt head, for example in stainless steel, when you're etching stainless steel, depending on what power setting you have, you can make that etching different colors. And that'll be a uh, video coming up here in the future showing uh, some of the things you can do with kind of changing colors. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. And here I did use a longer laser here uh, as an example, uh, mostly because I have all three heads for this and also because it was already on the table, so that was kind of handy. And there'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get one of these. It is a quality machine, and if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen uh, it used in a lot of projects. So if you get anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.